Worldlink TV presents a selection of news reports from independent and state-controlled broadcasters from throughout the Middle East. Welcome to the News in Brief. Iran's ambassador to Russia says that Moscow will supply his country with nuclear energy, even if Tehran does not sign the additional protocol allowing the International Atomic Energy Agency to conduct regular inspections. The UN Chief Inspector Hans Blix said in his last report to the Security Council that Iraq has left many questions unanswered regarding Iraq's non-conventional weapons, adding that this does not mean that these dangerous weapons still exist. A U.S. soldier was killed and five others were wounded in a new attack in Fallujah after it was announced that more troops would be sent there. The leader of the Kurdistan's Democratic Party, Mas'ud al-Barazani, is in Holy Najaf, meeting with a number of Shiite religious leaders in his first visit to the city since 1967. The Secretary General of the Arab League says that the roadmap should be given a chance to be implemented, especially after the positive outcomes of the Sharm el-Sheikh and Aqaba summits. Abu Mazen gave Arafat a report on the Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh summits. However, the Palestinian president doubts Sharon's intentions to implement the roadmap. What does it mean to us, removing a prefab home? saying he removes settlements. What is that? Foreign international observers have disappeared. They were monitoring the truce between Georgia and the Abghazia region, which are seeking their independence. This is the end of the News in Brief. The Palestinian public reaction to the Aqaba summit and the exclusion of the Palestinian president from it was that of anger. In a peaceful demonstration in Gaza, thousands of protesters vowed to continue with the armed operations. Meanwhile, President Arafat declared today that during the Aqaba summit, the Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon did not offer the Palestinians a tangible solution. In the hours following the conclusion of the Aqaba summit, the Palestinian public broke their silence, giving their support to President Arafat, who was excluded from the summit and remains under siege in his compound in Ramallah. A peaceful demonstration was launched in Gaza, organized by the National Organization for the Palestinian Martyrs' Families. More than 3,000 people protested, marching on the main streets of the city, and ending at the Legislative Council's headquarters. Whatever happens, let it happen. Whoever crosses Yasser Arafat will be the recipient of our bullets. The roadmap is leading us to hell. It does not include anything on the right of return, determination of our destiny, and the full withdrawal to the 1967 borders. In his first reactions to the Aqaba summit, Palestinian President Yasser Arafat said that Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon did not offer the Palestinians a tangible solution. Unfortunately, he did not offer any tangible solutions. What does it mean to us the removal of a few prefab homes? Israel announced that it will facilitate the way for Palestinian workers. However, the tight security measures are still the same. Furthermore, there are no indications that the Israeli side will lift the imposed restrictions on the mobility of people and cargo. Meanwhile, the Israeli government demanded that the Palestinian Prime Minister fulfill his promise of stopping the armed resistance. Israel has certainly taken bold steps on their side, but the main question is, will the Palestinians fulfill their promises? Will they take the first step and destroy the terrorist infrastructure? In light of the threats by some extremist Jewish groups, the occupation forces tightened its personal protection of Israel's prime minister, fearing attacks on him following his position on the establishment of a Palestinian state and the removal of some of the settlements.
في الوقت الذي While the Aqaba summit was convening, Israel tightened its curfew against Palestinian cities and declared maximum security alert status in anticipation of suicide operations. More details with our reporter Nasser al laham from occupied Jerusalem. It was a very hot and difficult day for the Palestinians. It started with incursions and curfews in Jenin and the demolition of two homes in Yatta in Hebron. The Israeli army imposed another curfew on the Nativity Church in Bethlehem and justified that by the need to talk with the people in charge of the church. Despite that, the Palestinians are not willing to give up on the road map. They heard about it, but they have not seen anything tangible from it. They seem to be in a need of a new road map to understand the road map. As the Al Aqaba summit concludes, the people are asking, are we demanded to stop the three-year-old Palestinian Intifada after 3,000 people were sacrificed, 50,000 were injured, and 10,000 were imprisoned in exchange for nothing? Past experiences have taught the Palestinians not to believe anything unless they see it. Palestinian officials are confronted with the questions, but they have no answers. What about the political prisoners? What about the settlements that were built after the Madrid Peace Conference? What about the curfew and checkpoints? What about the Palestinian workers and borders? The questions are simple, but the answers are hard to come by. Most of the Palestinian nationalists reject the roadmap as a solution to the conflict. However, Palestinians may be willing to give the roadmap a chance and test it to see if it takes them to the road for peace. Meanwhile, in the Hebrew country, a survey shows that 66% of Israelis do not think that the roadmap will bring a permanent solution. However, 59% of them decided to support it because it may be an opportunity to calm the situation down and reach a ceasefire. The Palestinians and the Israelis are confused. It seems that every one of them says, I am with the roadmap and I am against the roadmap. Hamas agreed on the ceasefire, but it makes fun of Sharon and those who bet on him and his government. By doing so, Hamas may have avoided a Palestinian civil war. The Israeli settlers started to prepare for confrontations with the occupation forces. The settlers won't surprise anybody if they kill Sharon in case he decides to force them to evacuate their settlements. Whoever uses force to achieve things may be killed by that force. While officially the Aqaba summit outcome was welcomed by Israeli and Palestinian officials, Israeli settlement groups and Palestinian resistance movements reacted otherwise. Israelis said the roadmap puts the very existence of Israel at stake, and Palestinians said they were astonished by the Palestinian remarks and vowed not to give up resistance. As well, the Yaqaba summit preset to meet U.S.-Israeli interests, the official Palestinian and Israeli reactions were no less a show of words that praised the summit meant to be presented as a diplomatic advance towards a settlement sponsored by Washington. Everybody should stop violence to give a chance to peace, and that could happen tomorrow. The Israelis also have an army that is disciplined, and they could give that army orders to, start, to stop tomorrow any incursions, any destruction, or any assassinations. I think the two parties should start dealing with their own constituencies to achieve the desired objectives of end of violence as soon as possible. The Americans are also coming with their monitors. So they too want to see the two parties doing what they should be doing in accordance with the roadmap. Uh, we, I must say that we were not used to hear from Palestinian leaders word of moderation and peace. For the last two and a half years, we have heard only words of hatred. Now we hear words of moderation. We hear the good intentions. We acknowledge the good intention. Now we want also to see actions on the ground to complete those good intentions. But for the many Palestinian factions, the summit's true face was revealed. They accused Palestinian Prime Minister Mahmoud Abbas of selling out their cause and surrendering under pressure from the U.S. and Israel. I want to say that Mr. Abbas today said to the world, 
that we are the aggressors and the Israelis are the victims. And so, Mr. Abbas going ahead in surrenders in front of the pressures from U.S. and Israel. As regards the Palestinians, we will continue our resistance until achieving our goals. Believe me, we will not give up one centimeter of Palestine. The Politburo of the Public Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Jamil Majdalawi, said all the speeches delivered in both Sharm el-Sheikh and Aqaba summits were distortion of this truth. He said the two summits were two chains in the series of the clearly stated U.S. plan to redraw the map of the region in a way that fits the U.S. interests while keeping Israel a central decision-making state. Israeli Defense Minister Shaul Mufaz was to discuss with aides Thursday the dismantling of some Israeli settlement outposts in the West Bank, as promised by Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. The radio said measures could be taken from next week in the face of fierce opposition from settlers who took to the streets of occupied Jerusalem on Wednesday night to, pro to protest Sharon's promise to dismantle rock settlements. Though his promise would only apply to a handful of the more than 60 outposts listed by by the Peace Now organization. While the international community considers all 160 Jewish settlements in the occupied territories and the more than 100 outposts in the West Bank to be illegal, Israel only considers some outposts which were not granted government authorization after they were set up to be illegal. <laughs> Some 40,000 of Israeli settlers took to the streets of Jerusalem Wednesday night to protest Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's promise to dismantle rock outposts in the West Bank. No to a Palestinian state, no to terrorism, and Jordan is Palestine were among the banners waved at the demonstration in the center of West Occupied Jerusalem. We don't owe our enemies anything, and Prime Minister Sharon, who pledged that he would have security and peace, is not bringing either. He's bringing war and terror. The demonstration was called by the Yesha Council of Settlements in the so-called Judah, Samaria and the Gaza Strip, the principal group representing the 226,000 settlers. The council denounced the meeting, saying the Aqaba summit is a humiliating ceremony celebrating Israel's surrender to Palestinian terrorism. The council spokesman, Yahweh Mor Yosef, said settlers will oppose the dismantling of settlement outposts, which are usually temporary structures erected with a view to expanding settler-held land. Joel Goldstein, a member of the council's executive committee, said settlers would battle fiercely against implementation of the roadmap, which would cause Israel dearly. The Palestinians, for their part, said there are no authorized or legal Israeli settlements according to international resolutions. At the same time, we're also a little bit concerned. Uh, for example, he said he would remove unauthorized settlements. That word unauthorized doesn't exist in the roadmap. That's a new Israeli insertion and perhaps it indicates a new Israeli interpretation because there's no such thing as an authorized or unauthorized. They're all illegal. Apart from the thorny issue of settlements, the Israeli government has made clear it is completely opposed to discuss the status of occupied Jerusalem, which Israelis took as their capital. In this effect, the Israeli right-wing party Modulet seized a house for a Palestinian family in East Jerusalem and set their first offices there in a move opposing dividing the old holy city. Hezbollah Secretary General Said Hassan Nasrallah said that this stage needs to be led by courageous men. In a speech he gave during a rally marking the 14th anniversary of late Imam Khomeini's death held in Beirut, Said Nasrallah warned against Israel launching a new campaign to displace the Palestinians in lands occupied since 1948 after the two summits of what he called U.S. dictations. Nasrallah further highlighted the danger behind the Palestinian Arab acknowledgement that Israel is a Jewish state. يطرح شارون في هذه الأيام ما هو خطير جدا وما أريد أن أدعو إلى الانتباه إليه وتحليله ودراسته بعمق لماذا الإصرار على أن يعترف أبو مازن والفلسطينيون بإسرائيل كدولة يهودية تم هم بأسلو اعترفوا بدولة إسرائيل القائمة على أراضي 48 راح يفاوضوا على 67 
اعترف بها دولة قانونية شرعية إلى آخره لماذا الإصرار الآن على الاعتراف بها دولة يهودية هذا كلام خطير جدا 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 يمكن لم يتسنى للبعض أن يقرأه أو يحلله أو يقف عنده حتى الآن في الوقت الذي يطالب فيه الفلسطينيون والعرب بإعادة اللاجئين الفلسطينيين يقال أن إسرائيل دولة يهودية يعني لا عودة للاجئين الفلسطينيين ولو كان الأمر عند هذه الحدود لما سمعنا جديدا ولكن الدعوة إلى اعتراف فلسطيني وعربي بأن إسرائيل دولة يهودية يكشف عن شيء قائم وثابت في عقيدة هذا الكيان الصهيوني وهي عقلية وعقيدة التطهير العرقي إننا نشم من رائحة المطالبة بالاعتراف بأن إسرائيل دولة يهودية نشم منها رائحة مشروع ترانسفير مشروع تهجير فلسطينيي 48 الخطأ المركزي والاستراتيجي في النظرة إلى الأمور تكمن هنا إلى الذين ينظرون إلى حماس والجهاد وفصائل المقاومة في فلسطين على أنهم مرتزقة لهذه الدولة أو لتلك الدولة الخطأ الاستراتيجي يكمن هنا في أولئك الذين يتصورون أن أحزاب أو فصائل أو حركات المقاومة في لبنان وفي طليعتها حزب الله أنهم مرتزقة أو عملاء أو مستخدمين عند هذه الدولة أو تلك الدولة وبالتالي وبالتالي يتصورون أن محاصرة هذه الدول والضغط على هذه الدول يمكن أن ينهي المقاومة في فلسطين أو يمكن أن يدفع المقاومة في لبنان إلى التخلي عن سلاحها إلى التخلي عن واجبها في تحرير العرض والعسرة والدفاع عن شعبها وكرامتها ومقدسات بلدها ووطنها وأمتها مشتبه هؤلاء While Abu Mazen is talking about reaching an agreement with Hamas regarding a ceasefire, Hamas says it is still studying the issue. In any case, negotiations on a ceasefire are still open, especially after Hamas's spiritual leader, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, declared that his organization is willing to accept a conditional and temporary ceasefire. While talks increase about the possibility of ending operations against Israeli civilians on the condition that Israel stop its own operations against Palestinians, occupation forces demolish several Palestinian homes, killing one Palestinian man. Meanwhile, Abdel Aziz al Ratisi, a leader of the Islamic resistance Hamas, said that the organization is still studying the possibility of a ceasefire against civilians, taking into consideration the new political developments at all levels. He indicated a possibility of ending operations against Israeli civilians on the condition that Israel halts its aggression and assassinations against Palestinians, in addition to releasing political prisoners. On the other hand, the spokesman of Hamas, Mahmoud al-Zahar, reiterated the initial position of the organization to stop attacks against Israelis. He confirmed that the organization is still examining Palestinian Prime Minister Mahmoud Abbas's suggestions on this issue. He offered the possibility of he offered several possibilities, a temporary ceasefire without any details. We are still evaluating these suggestions within the organization. The latest political developments have affected ordinary Palestinians as well as the leaders of the Intifada. We hear Sharon's declarations about his acceptance of the roadmap and the establishment of a Palestinian state. We say, God willing, Sharon will implement the map. We demand that the Israeli people support this position to end the bloodshed 
and the killing at the hands of the Israeli Defense Forces. We can't coexist in two states, a Palestinian state and an Israeli state as neighbors, so our children can live in peace. Enough bloodshed. In response to statements made by Palestinian Prime Minister Mahmoud Abbas Abu Mazen, who confirmed the possibility of reaching a ceasefire agreement with Hamas, Abdel Aziz Al Rantisi said that Hamas has not yet made a decision on this issue. Professor Ali Saraf, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, talked about the possibility that Hamas may accept the ceasefire on conditions. Do you think that Hamas is in the position to impose such conditions? Hamas does not have the ability to impose conditions, but it can take a position. It cannot end the resistance, the intifada, and the suicide operations without making conditions. Nonetheless, it's clear that the Palestinian Authority is putting pressure on Hamas to accept Abu Mazen efforts as a positive step, to accept the notion that this man is capable of achieving something in compliance with the roadmap. Hamas says it's against the roadmap, but it knows very well that the roadmap leads to some form of freedom, withdrawal, and land. Thus, Hamas cannot say that it rejects even this. It is important for Hamas and Ahmad Yassin to give the Palestinian Authority an opportunity to achieve something. The Palestinian President Yasser Arafat welcomed the Israeli-Palestinian summit in Aqaba between the Palestinian and Israeli Prime Ministers. Arafat made this declaration after meeting a number of foreign diplomats, including the Russian ambassador. The meeting took place despite Israeli threats to boycott any official who meets with Arafat. Also, Arafat demanded that Israel stop its unjustified aggression against the Palestinians. The most important thing is that Israel stops its continuous escalation, curfews, aggression, oppression, the raising of agricultural lands and home demolition. In Ramallah, which is under intensive curfew, maybe you notice the leaflets that the Israeli distributed, threatening new incursions. God willing, we hope that a solution will result from the two summits in Sharam al-Sheikh and al-Aqaba. We want the immediate implementation of the roadmap, which is based on the peace of the Braves, which I have signed with my friend Yitzhak Rabin. We want the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital, God willing. In his final report to the U.N. Security Council, Chief U.N. Arms Inspector Hans Blix said neither his team nor U.S. and British troops have uncovered weapons of mass destruction in Iran. Blix said he had not found that, that Iraq resumed its weapons programs, although this did not mean such items did not exist. But he said it was not justified to jump uh, to conclusions that something exists just because it is unaccounted for. Blix, who leaves his post by the end of the month, has been sidelined by the U.S. as it attempts to explain why it has not found dangerous weapons in Iraq after some 11 weeks of searches since the war. He appealed to the 15-member body to have an effective presence of international inspectors back in Iraq. The matter finds could be because the items were unilaterally destroyed by the Iraqi authorities or else because they were effectively concealed by them. I trust that in the new environment in Iraq in which there is full access and cooperation 
and in which knowledgeable witnesses should no longer be inhibited to reveal what they know, it should be possible to establish the truth we all want to know. As the U.S. president justified his reasons for sending troops to Iraq, more U.S. soldiers came under fire in the west of town of Fallujah. A U.S. soldier was killed and five were wounded when an assailant fired a rocket-propelled grenade at them. Fallujah, 40 kilometers west of Baghdad, has been the scene of recurring tensions after U.S. soldiers killed 15 Iraqis demonstrating against U.S. forces last April. The U.S. military spokesman said two American soldiers had also been wounded in Baghdad when two attackers fired on them as they were guarding a bank. We will turn our attention to a report on some of the cultural and religious customs that are part of the spiritual life of some Iraqis. We will witness a traditional celebration of the Holy Prophet's birthday according to the Qadari tradition in the village of Akrab. This is the first time they have allowed television cameras which recorded the celebration of this sect and those who supervise these rituals who are called the Muharrabin. This following report covers some of these demonstrations and celebrations of the Honorable Prophet's birthday by the Qadri, Jilani people. It is as if their bodies have died today and their spirit lives so that it makes them closer to God using language and body mutilation as they see fit. This is the Qadri tradition of celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. People of all the Kurdish areas come to the village of Akrab. Before they enter, they must pass by the shrine of Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Jilani, who is the son of the great leader Abdul Qadir Al Jilani. The issue of using the asawad or the daggers is nothing but an act to please God. It is to honor the saints and prove their miracles. The Muharrab is also one of the Darwish. This is an important step of the celebrations and rituals. He administers the stabbing of knives and swords into the bodies of the followers. We cannot feel anything when we are pierced. We have no feelings in our bodies because of the level of our faith. This year and every year, this celebration takes place in Akrab in Kurdistan, Iraq, to remember the birthday of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. The Qadri school celebrations and original traditions are the customs and culture of the people from this area. al tuqya or the tomb of the Sheikh, is guarded by these volunteers to earn blessings according to their beliefs. In the middle of his place, the Ulani Qadri Sheikh blesses the movements of the Darwish after touching their swords and daggers. The Qadri traditions were always present. It was present during the time of Saddam Hussein and even before Saddam Hussein. This history of our school has been around for the past 350 years. Our father, Sheikh Ismail Uluyani, who is buried in Barobia, established this tradition. And from 350 years ago until today, this tradition is present. For the first time here, they permitted the taping of this celebration, which is visited by people who follow the Qadri school from all over the world. Al Madar, Ahmad Hazallah, Abu Dhabi Television, from the village of Akra near Kirkuk, Kurdistan, Iraq. Mosaic is made possible by a grant from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, which promotes journalism excellence worldwide and invests in the vitality of 26 U.S. communities, and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, 